Ladies and gents, Six Figs here from YouTube. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the crypto markets. They are bleeding out. How much lower are we going to go? We are going to be talking about everything crypto news, Divinity, what's going on within the ecosystem, stuff like that. There's some drama going on on the NNS and all sorts of jazz. So let's get into this. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you're at in the world. We are talking ICP news right now from Definity's chief of staff. We've got an update for the Definity headquarters. Looks like they slapped on a very nice ICP logo to the building. Man, I wouldn't mind getting one of these for my own office. I'd even put that on my house. It's so nice, to be honest with you. Uh, we got a little tweet here out of CZ, Binance leader, and really the oldest bank in America, BNY Mellon, will hold crypto assets and conduct transfers for its clients now. The one thing that I just, you know, it, it gives me a little bit of, consternation is the fact that here we might have people transferring crypto assets that are in a decentralized form already like something in your cold or uh, you know your cold wallet or, or whatever and now they are in the custody of a bank and I'm just going like man after seeing what the folks went through at like Celsius and what the folks at Voyager went through where their crypto was in the hands of basically an exchange or a bank. Oh, I just, you know, man, I, it, it's going to be really hard to build that trust back up. In my opinion, I've got some crypto on an exchange, crypto.com. It's like, a thousand bucks worth. I know the risks. It's not going to break me, hopefully, if I lose it. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how many investors in how many of these higher profile people that just don't really understand crypto that are involved with uh, BNY Mellon will take part in this. It's just kind of one of those things, right? Uh, we got Sears. Now, Sears is kind of like a decentralized Twitter that allows betting and stuff like that. Uh, they dropped a banger of a tweet. Will ICP fall under $5 before the 1st of November? A lot of people guessing yes. Uh, some people guessing no. Volume 20 ICP. This is kind of cool. I like how you can, you know, speculate on, on price. It's like a bet that you're doing with with your friends on a sporting event you know it, it's just kind of cool to be able to do that with crypto uh, in a decentralized fashion so big shout out to sears it's going to be interesting we're going to go over some technical analysis in just a moment but uh really folks ludo man i tell you what this dude is buck wild he is dropping the bitcoin flower uh, collab of t-shirts like man supposedly october 18th october 17th somewhere in that neck of the woods there's going to be some sort of announcement made quite possibly i'm going to load up uh just saying i i am very passionate about bitcoin flower the you know internet computer ecosystem so i like wearing the shirts now, folks, we did get a tweet out of the one and only Dominic Williams. A new venture incubator decided... <laughs> wow, did I butcher that. A new venture incubator dedicated to projects building on the internet computer with huge potential. Congrats, C.D. Waldberger and co. Uh, basically, there is a new launch pad called Code and State assisting projects get launched on the internet computer. This is their website, Code and State. You can click this button and send them an email if you're looking to possibly build up your projects. Kind of a cool thing. Divinity also has a grants program where if your project is selected, you can get a grant of anywhere from like 10,000 to 25,000 to 50,000 to like 100,000 ICP to help build out your, um, you know, your projects. 
these little launch pads like Code and State will help you realize your dream and things like that. You can check them out on, on Twitter as well, at Code and State. Um, you know, they're pretty active from what I could tell. Uh, you know, and, and speaking of the one and only Dominic Williams, we had an NNS proposal, folks. <laughs> And I have seen this almost break crypto Twitter. Um, we had, <laughs> and I I know this is all in probably good fun. Stop Dom from tweeting. I motion. 82% said yes. So far, <laughs> uh, 14% say no. So it, it's funny. I, I think it's funny to a certain extent, right? It, it's kind of humorous. Stop Dom from tweeting. I hope that Dominic Williams never stops tweeting personally. That's just where, where I'm going to leave things at right now. Uh, but when we're talking about the price of internet computer folks, back in August, late August, you know, I've, I've been talking about this possibility and we'll look at um at, at bitcoin here as well but i've been talking about the the possibility of this harmonic pattern you know something like this playing out and and this is something that i've su suspected really now for quite some time since august so it does appear that this could possibly be realizing I was kind of apprehensive the last week or two if this was actually going to play out. So for those of you that are not familiar with harmonic patterns and things like that, uh, basically this could be could be some sort of bullish butterfly or some sort of bullish Gartley pattern. It's always really kind of tough to tell. You know, a lot of times things just aren't as cut and dry as as uh, you'd need them to be. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you know, if we go ahead, I'm just going to measure from this close on this this candle here down to this point here, up to here. And, and really what I'm trying to figure out with this, with this harmonic pattern is where prices are going to go to with ICP in this example. How do we know if this is some sort of bullish Gartley or butterfly pattern? Well, the first things first, I need to measure my B point. We're going to just do that right now. And I'm going to measure, like I said, um, you know, from, th from this point here. And what I'm looking for is for B to come down and pierce the 61.8. And I'm looking for B to not go lower than the 786. It appears that has not happened. Um, and, and it is what it is, right? So even if we ran this up to the top of this wick, we're still well within the boundaries. Uh, but let's just go ahead and flip flop this. And we're just going to post this right up to this close here. So bear with me one second here. And then I'm going to measure from X here. And what I'm looking for here is that price action at least comes up to the 61.8 which it did perfectly. The one thing is that we can't have price increase higher than point A. And so then what we are looking to do is measure via retracement up to A. And what I'm looking for is this 127 or 161.8 level. So if I had to make a guess here as to where ICP was going, well, I think that we might kind of trade sideways here uh, uh, here for a little bit. Excuse me. We're looking at a 12-hour chart. I, I think we're going to trade sideways a little bit, maybe form a symmetrical triangle, bear flag, something like that. I do think that it's possible for price to come back up and test this $5.66 level. I do think that it's possible for price to come down to this $4.78 level. And if it starts breaking from that level, I think it's possible that we'll get the, the 141 or at $4.32. Really, when people start 
messing around with these harmonic patterns, they either make a choice to buy at the 127 or the 161.8, excuse me. And so uh, it's, it's always a lot safer, in my opinion, to buy the 161.8, uh, not financial or trading advice, because guess what? Things could get really bad in the crypto market. And guess what? We could be looking at all these lower prices here. So what I'm looking for is that if these prices continue to break through these retracement levels here, man, I, I'm looking for some level of support. That's it. And, and really, you know, we're seeing this, uh, you know, th this downtrend happen right now uh, within the last 24 hours of ICP. Let's go ahead and just look at this on the daily charts, or excuse me, on the weekly charts. And I'm going to clear all this stuff. Yeah, you know, and, and here we are, you know, price action in relation to this Ichimoku cloud. Let's just pretend that this 50 moving average might just kind of come down like this or something. At some point, I'm hoping that price uh, just kind of uh, wiggles its way up to this 50 moving average. Uh, for a retest, uh, possibly, I'd be hoping that maybe we could get some sort of cup and handle uh, and, and to start taking off or something like that. Let's just take a quick look at Bitcoin as well, right? Um, man, here's what I'm paying attention to on Bitcoin for the weekly chart. Uh, let's just, let's just actually, you know what, let's, let's bring this back down to a, a daily. Uh, when, when I go ahead and measure this uh, Fibonacci time sequence uh, over to this, you know, from this low up to this high, we get this time sequence that appears October 12th. So is this just a shakeout or is this going to be a point where we need to be considering the possibility of increased volatility, uh, which could really kind of break us down even further? Um, man, you know, I'm, I'm hoping we don't see everyone's bags drop even more than they already have because it's been a wild, wild ride, man, since November. And really, man, I'm, I'm hoping this, this blue area here is what's called the 786 common area for traders to make this reversal, uh, in, in sentiment, um, you know, it's not always guaranteed. I've mentioned this in the other videos that, hey, I think that there could be, you know, there could be this A, B, C, D, E corrective wave that's playing out. And we might be just trying to realize where this E spot is. You know, where is this spot uh, for Bitcoin uh, going to take us? Um, going back to that whole Gartley pattern thing that I just discussed with Bitcoin or excuse me, excuse me, with ICP, you know, we, we could make that same argument that this might exist uh, for ICP to some extent. Um, let's just go ahead and, and investigate this. I mean, man, you could make the argument that there could be uh, something going on here. You know, $16,777, man, that's looking like a, a a point or a stop for bitcoin fourteen thousand four hundred and forty two dollars you know the i'm gonna be looking you know for bitcoin to find a solid ground within these price ranges personally again none of this is financial or trading advice uh just kind of what i'm seeing in the market stuff like that it's, it's a bearish time for crypto right now a lot of things going on with everybody, um, you know, to say, to say the least. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and just throw down this uh, Bitcoin investor tool. This has always been a great visual uh, for analyzing the bear markets. From what I can tell, looking at crypto in hindsight. You know, the 730-day moving average has been a halfway decent little moving average to really kind of find out where the bear market's at. Prices dropped in 
uh, under the 730. And it, you know, we didn't know it at the time, but it was a decent time to accumulate crypto. Again, in 2018, 19, you know, we're seeing the same thing happen. And, and with the coronavirus crash and with really what's been going on in the crypto space since May, man, we are still under this 730 day moving average on the daily chart price, you know, is squeezing. No doubts about that. Bitcoin is squeezing. So I'm hoping we don't see those lower numbers. I'm hoping that we get this little symmetrical triangle squeeze bounce back to the upside. If people keep nibbling on these, you know, 16 to $20,000 Bitcoin prices, I mean, hey, uh, it, it is what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Stick around for the end screens. We got some other cool videos that uh, are in the recommendations. Uh, we'll see you guys all on the next one.